YouTube friends. It has been almost a year and a half since I have posted anything on here publicly, since we've had a chance to chat, since we've spoken face to face or foot to face, feet to face as it might be. And for those of you who knew me before when I was posting regularly uh, and followed me at that time, and to those of you who've been even reached out to me over the past year plus, and let me know that you've noticed my absence, you missed my content, etc. Please know I'm so, so grateful to you, as well as to everyone else who's found my content, uh, content in the last year. I cannot wait, truly, although it seems like, really, you've been waiting a year and a half, but uh, that notwithstanding, I am very excited to share with you the just immeasurable amount of information that I've learned on so many different topics about the body through my own trials and injuries and setbacks and frustration and also studies dedicated studies on an experimentation in this past year and i know this is a super awkward video i'm holding the phone really close to my face because there's a lot of wind and traffic sounds in the background uh, and i don't have a mic because this is impromptu at the end of a walk with my dogs um god it's been so long you guys don't even know my dogs oh you can't see them they're dogs that you didn't see in the past because i got them in December and my sweet old orange man who I'd had for almost 20 years who was featured in many of my videos in the past I had to say goodbye to him in January um, 11 months before I got these guys so anyway just saying a lot of time has passed and what I was starting to tell you is I have been walking them and that's actually super significant because one of the injuries with which I have been so agonizingly beset for many, many months, to feeling extremely demoralized about it, as a matter of fact, um, I've recently had a big breakthrough. And one of the things that that breakthrough has, and trust me, I'm gonna share it all with you. I'm not just gonna leave that as like, a, well, hey, do you have anything, anything of note, any insight for us? Yes, yes, please believe I will share everything. Um, but what I wanna say now is let's just jump right back into it. Let's just jump in where we left off and let's do some thinking about our feet and how we care for them. So now that I can walk, right, well, here, I'll show you. That's not a limp, and I'm sh what I'm showing you there is there's a callus. There's a callus on the tip of that toe because for so much of the time that I've been uh, walking these poor dogs, I've been limping and having a, a terribly compensated and very injurious walk that has been just fucking sucked, guys. <laughs> it's just sucked. Sorry if anyone's offended by swearing. Welcome to my channel. I'm welcoming myself back to this channel. Please, caveat, I, I will swear at times. Um... So I've had to limp and I haven't been able to really strengthen my feet because it's been contributing to my injury. I know that sounds ironic, just hang tight, I'll fill you in. But one of the things I wanna to say to today, now that I can walk again and now that my feet are, hopefully I'm gonna knock on that tree when I'm done, are coming out of uh, you know the worst of this condition I've had, I'm able to squeeze them again. I'm able to squeeze my feet and use those muscles. What am I mean by squeeze? I'm making a fist with my feet as I do that, okay? It's not as dramatic with my foot, but you can see the wrinkles on the inside, right? And I'm trying to squeeze my foot with my foot muscles and not with my calf, okay? They're, those are interrelated, but it's like the idea of using your hand muscles versus your forearm muscles. You can use your forearm muscles to like create tension in your palm and fingers, or you can just engage the hand uh, and the muscles intrinsic to the hand. And it's not a perfect analogy, but there's enough overlap that you get the idea. Many of us are just using our calf muscles to move our feet, and our feet are sort of like little flippers in our shoes. And as much as possible, really loud motorcycle, I hope you can hear. Um, as much as possible, we want to upregulate and foreground the muscles in our feet so that at least there's parity and there's a fair balance in the contribution of force production between our calf and our foot. Just like you want our, your forearm to be strong and your grip strength to be strong, right? Either one of those will be a weak link for you if you try to do anything with your forearm. Same with your calf, okay? And the full body, obviously, as it relates to your foot. So at the end of a walk, I love to squeeze my feet. It just feels so good. And you're thinking, or you might be thinking, that's a little strange, because at the end of a walk, like a, potentially a long walk on concrete, whatever, your feet are tired. They could be tired. And what's so interesting, what I, where I want to share this is because the foot's job is, 
it's pretty brutal, right? This is my pretend foot. I know my arch is, my thumb is just not so good at this, but you get the idea. The foot is being stretched under gravity as it compresses against the ground. That's its, that's its job, right? That's its job. So when you're walking, we can walk in better and worse ways. We can walk in more and less propulsive and muscular ways that protect the foot so this isn't quite so uh, damaging, right? Or injurious, right? We don't want it to be injurious. This is its natural job. But it's having to do a lot of end range. It's like being in a plank and having someone step on your butt in a plank, right? Your abs and your forearm, you know, everything in your arms and your chest and your hip flexors are just being stretched to resist bottoming out in your plank. So one of the things that feels really good at the end of that is just to squeeze and shorten the muscles, like curling into a little ball after you did your, your plank, for example, to let those muscles, instead of being forced long, to let them shorten and get blood flow directionally in another direction. It's not the same as planks, because that might not be what you would intuitively want to do at the end of a plank. But what I'm telling you to do is if your feet are tired and fatigued, even if you don't have any pain symptoms, they're just, you know, you went for a walk, at the end of your walk, squeeze your feet, squeeze your feet. And that is a beautiful way to take the stress. It's the antidote to the, to the, to the stress that the foot naturally experiences in its function. Squeezing the foot this way, even though it's, you have to actively make that happen so it doesn't seem like it's restful, it actually does allow the tissue that is stressed from our natural gait cycle to be offloaded, right? To let it have some uh, release. So of course you can roll, you know, roll your feet and do all that business as well, but just keep in mind that's contributing to stretch factors. In my personal experience, again, N of one, my personal experience, and it's not like anyone, else, I've never found anyone else who even talks about this. So I, I don't know if anyone else has even tried it. I don't know if they're, I don't know if other people don't talk about it because they disagree or they just never have considered it. So we don't know, right? But for me, I will tell you, it makes my feet feel so much more energized at the end of the day, at the end of a walk, after a workout, to squeeze them. Another tip, while we're here, <laughs> we got a year and a half to make up for. I'm sorry for anyone who hates this video already. Like she's never stays on topic. She's so annoying to listen to. <laughs> Um, one of the other things you can, I will say, is at the end of a walk, or a workout for that matter, like if you were to do anything else, anything else that's just physically taxing but isn't specifically focused on your feet, full body movement of any kind, squats, you know, whatever, whatever your, whatever your exercise is, at the end of that, take it as part of your cool down, squeeze your feet, squeeze your feet, because I get the best activation of my foot muscles at the end of other full body movement, okay? And I think it has to do with the fact that our feet are implicated in all of our other full body movements, assuming we're on our feet as we do at least some of it, right? They're implicated, but they're not the main actor. And so they get stimulated, stimulated, stimulated by the action of all the other muscles upstream, your hip flexors, you know, the muscles in your, all the muscles in your hip just for starters, we'll just leave it there, okay? And they're involved in almost every movement we have. So at the end of that, it's like, for some reason, the foot is very primed. It's not fatigued, but it's very primed by all of the sort of flickers of, of activation that it's gotten over the course of the workout. And then when you go to really, you know, do your foot strengthening, whatever that looks like for you, and I'll have some ideas to share with you. It's a big part of what I've developed over this year. It's funny, I'm talking about it like I posted it. You guys don't have any idea what I'm talking about, but squeezing your feet, <laughs> um, activating the muscles of your feet, doing a foot fist, right? Doing a foot crunch like this, um, you get some of the best blood flow and activation. And I will also say that's in part because the muscles in the foot have been sort of tangentially um, activated but also all the nerves in the feet because different nerves coming from your spine that work their way all the way down to your toes that are implicated with other muscles and you know complex human movements those are being upregulated as you do your workout and then when you go to strengthen your feet they're already kind of on board and I say this as opposed to for example when I squeeze my feet before I get out of bed in the morning which is like how I give them a little bit of coffee right I wake them up or at just other times when I'm otherwise kind of cold. I, yeah, I can sometimes have a great foot workout, right? I'm sitting in the sun, I decide to make a foot exercise session out of it, cool. But just very consistently, I get breakthroughs 
in terms of which muscles I can feel and the robustness with which I can activate them. So I get a really good squeeze, like, you know, in your palm, for example. Imagine you couldn't close your pinky finger in your palm, and you, every day you wanted to feel these muscles on the outside of your, your palm really activate, and you couldn't. Well, that's what you need to be able to do, and you're fishing for that type of activation in your feet as well. And at the end of a workout, when those muscles have been sort of hinted at, that might be a moment when you get your breakthrough, okay? So what are the morals of today's <laughs> long-awaited, <laughs> totally anticlimactic episode? <laughs> At the end of a walk, consider squeezing your feet, not stretching them. All right, so I know a lot of us might want to use this curb and stretch our foot, stretch our calf. All right, knock yourself out. It's your body. But I like to sit in the back of my car. This is me tailgating. I like to sit in the back of my car and squeeze my feet and torture my dogs, taking my sweet-ass time. Um, squeeze my feet instead. And number two, at the end of any physical exertion, assuming it's on dry land and using your feet, might work for swimming too, I don't know, but any other type of exercise, including walking, jogging, dance, etc. Oh, hi, doggy. <laughs> One second. It's a great opportunity to bring your feet to life <laughs> before my dogs have a total meltdown.